How's it going? Hey, how are you? <laughs> how are you? I'm good, man. All right. Well, first of all, congratulations with the, the new Greatest Hits album. Thank you very much. Now, I noticed that so there's 12 tracks. So if we can just go over some of them, I mean, of course, the big hit, Paralyzer, <laughs> which was, um, I just realized that last night it had like 50 million views, which is fantastic. Yeah, that song, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a big one, man. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. It was, a, it was one of those happy accidents, one of those things that you hear, you know, it was a, I hear other songwriters talk about how, you know, this classic song took like 45 minutes to write. It was really simple and Paralyzer was a little bit like that. You know, mm. it was the songs, it's the album tracks that take a long time that nobody cares about. Uh, you labor over forever and ever and they don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, did I hear that right, that you guys wrote that while you're doing like a photo shoot or something? So the, the, the band is rehearsing and they, they pack up the day and they forget that a friend of theirs wants to photograph the band that day. So they're yeah. packing up and the photographer shows up. He's like, guys, sorry, I'm late. And they're like, well, we just finished. And he's like, well, do you mind setting up again? And just like, well, just, just fake it. You don't have to rehearse again. Yeah. And so they're like, they set everything up and they're like, well, we may as well just actually rehearse. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it had to be easier than faking it. But they came up with this riff and they're like, oh, okay, we should record that. That's pretty good. And then we'll send it to Scott and we'll see what he does with it. And they sent it to me and I immediately was like, this is neat. This is like some sort of disco rock thing. Um, how do I find my way around this? Oh, well, I'll, I'll write about how this place is probably too cool for somebody like me. And uh, within an hour or two, I had pretty much the, the whole thing. Like it, it, it was wild. It was such a happy accident, but it, the song almost never had an opportunity to exist if it wasn't for our late photographer friend yeah so you got him to, to think mm -hmm. absolutely we should we should get around to doing that we haven't thanked him for that yet no that's great but what i really like i mean with all your guys songs uh with the two guitars the way you really uh, emphasize on the two different parts which really stands out for me it's not like just you know one's playing this one's playing lock you higher or something it's actually two different parts which is really really cool oh yeah they they obsess over that you know mm. there's always i think i think um rick in the left channel no 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 james is in the left channel and rick is in the right channel yeah. and uh that's how it is live too um oh yeah but there's there's you know as far as guitars go there's there's no accidents on the record it's all very meticulously uh uh <laughs> worked out they love it they love it so it's good that yeah. you, you catch that as a singer sometimes i don't <laughs> sometimes <laughs> i don't the intricate but they, uh, they work really hard at all that. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like having a, you know, a keyboard player in the band, the way they do the different voicings and everything. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll spend, um, you know, if we're in the studio, they'll spend all the time you, you'll give them to make their guitar sound like something else. You know, that's their favorite thing to do. <laughs> you know, they, they'll just, they'll experiment over and over and over. And it comes, you know, like the songs always benefit because they yeah. kind of, like really cool, unique, you know, uh, sound or guitar lick. And it, uh, it's, they, 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 that's like, they're, that's one of their specialties. They both, they love doing that and they have endless patience for it. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, it definitely comes across in, you know, like I said, in nearly all the songs, you know, especially on the, the new song too, Together Right, which is another great song. So, yeah. I, um, thank you. And uh, what's really cool about that, the, that song has been around for a little while and we've, we've, we've opened it up and we've been working on it for quite a while, um, which has its own dangers, you know, when you break open a song and you're trying not to wreck it. But uh, the solo was one of the later additions to that song. And I mean, oh, when that, when that part kicks in, I was just like, man, I, I wish I played guitar. That's, that's <laughs> cool. It's so good. I love that part. You know, I'm, right. I'm, I'm really into it so but it was a late addition and such a welcome one it's you know you, you you when you're trying to put a song together you're like well look you need a chorus you need a verse you need a good middle eight and you need a good outro and you know if you've got it a, a great solo uh, is always welcome and um i think together right really kind of has all those things and it's nice when th that people have reacted the way they have people enjoying the song so i i, I kind of love it yeah 
And the, the good thing about these these two songs, um, I noticed the film clips got a little bit of a, a theme going on with the dancing. Yeah, there's a, there's, there's a really good, I mean, the video it features a really interesting dance and there's this kind of like conformity element and there are, the dancers are kind of breaking out into these like chaotic moves. And that all came from the brain of James Black. He, he had these dance moves set up and the band was gonna do some of those dances in the, in the video. Um, but thankfully that part got cut. And <laughs> by, by, I mean, too late for me. I can't, I can't learn how to dance at this point. But uh, yeah, everything kind of came together. The video, the video is really cool too. So you never know with the video, but it, uh, I like the, I like this one. Yeah, you know, it came out great. And, and that one's already had like lots of views as well. I think it's like over a hundred thousand views. So it's, it's doing really well. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, now going over some of the other songs. So the, I mean, they're all from the other albums anyway. Um, now the other one, the, Fleetwood, not Fleetwood, mate. <laughs> Pink Floyd song. <laughs> uh, so whose idea was that one? Oh, well, Welcome to the Machine was a song that we would play live. We would open our set with that song sometimes. Um, just a kind of as a bold choice. It's just for something to really kind of set the tone. I don't know, but we've We've been struggling with trying to get a studio version together for a number of years. We tried, we had a session um, at this really cool studio that was a barn and it was a really cool vibe, but we just didn't get it. We didn't, you know, we had to sort of abandon it. And a couple of years later, we tried to get in a different studio and the results were much better. And we felt a lot better about this version. And, and so we thought, well, Maybe it's a good idea. Maybe we can put it on the greatest hits. Maybe that's a good idea. Let's see. And so here we are. It's mm. found on their greatest hits record. Yeah, that's really good. Now, any of these songs are they remastered or touched up? Any? No, except remaster for vinyl. Uh, okay. Our first um, vinyl release, which um, was another thing we've talked about for years. We wanted to do this. Um, so there's there's a bunch of nice things happening you know like finger 11 is putting out their first greatest hits record that's awesome um mm. we're putting new music and found uh, and then we're, we get to do um a vinyl release finally so mm. all these kind of came together you know finger 11 has been a little quiet over the years so it's like okay how do we get new music out as fast as possible and then how do we fulfill our uh our greatest hits and finally get a final out there let's do it like instead of let's stop talking about it and let's actually do it <laughs> so yeah. here yeah that's really good but in saying that i mean like saying be, be, be quiet but you've um you've been busy you know if you're growing up your your son and then does it... mm -hmm. oh man yep i don't know um this is my first time going around here and uh I'm learning as I go, but uh, yeah, what a, I have been very, very busy. And I didn't used to, you know, my friends would have kids and I don't be like, yeah, you want to go out later? It's like, well, no, I gotta, you know, like gotta put my, uh, you know, gotta put my kid to bed. And it's like, well, okay, put, you know, chuck him in bed and then, you know, come on. <laughs> it doesn't end there. There is so much cleaning and prep and it, like, it, it just doesn't end. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then it's just so wild. Uh, so I, you know, I'm going through it and all the cliche stuff, the stuff that's happening to me for the first time is becoming real and, uh, not just a cliche. So yes, I have been busy and, um, but I, I like him. He's, he's kind of like a little person now, instead of like, you know, that little like red alien baby that can't hold his neck up. Like I, I, I did like that the hospital, um, let me leave with him. Like I'm the primary you know, like what? I'm the. I gotta. It's my job. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yes. So I've definitely been busy, and um, he 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 likes the new video. He does it every night. Uh, oh, really? oh man. Yes. It's part of like. It's now part of the bedtime routine. So <laughs> he likes. But there's there's some videos where he'll just like we'll we'll show him some older songs, and he's like, well, I don't like that one. So he's a tough critic. Like he's, you know, he, he he's telling it like it is. So yeah. <laughs> be an end to that anytime soon. Yeah. So he'll be your your hardest critic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's really good. And I suppose you, the good thing about the uh, the whole um, COVID session, like you, you got to spend that time with him in those you know, years growing up. Definitely a silver lining. That's what I, I would have been staying home doing nothing anyway. So great. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I had it real easy compared to a lot of people. I had the luxury of being able to do that, which is which is very nice. Yeah, um, but yeah, it, like like everybody else, it was definitely a, a blur, but also, you know, um, really fortunate. We're, we're going to start to get busy and I don't get to stay home all the time. And I like, again, like he does different stuff every day. So yeah. I'm going to miss some stuff and it's going to kill. But also I miss playing so much. I, 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 I miss hanging out with my friends. I miss, you know, yeah. playing. Sh- so there's you can't you can't really have it both ways. So um, uh, this is this is what's coming up. So we'll we'll see how it all plays out. Yeah. But I think for, for me, like that, they're probably the perf- perfect years to have a COVID because I know, like my kids are six and seven, so they were going through the school years um, in COVID. It was just it was crazy. It was a, it was a nightmare. <laughs> so to have it before they go to school that time, I reckon it's perfect. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, my uh, my wife is a teacher, so she took an extended leave, um, mm. and she heard a lot of you know there were some tough stories about her coworkers were saying like trying to adjust to remote learning like. Just, you know, I, I don't think any teacher sort of misses that era. Nah. <laughs> it's, it's nice for them to actually all be back now. So that's good. Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a teacher as well. I teach uh, music at school. So, um, oh, nice. Yeah. So all my time was spent on, online. Like, I think my eyesight's just gone over the last two years, you know, <laughs> for being online and teaching. Yeah. Oh, man, that's so cool. Like, I definitely, I have my music teacher to thank for the, the motivation and the inspiration to like just become what I wanted to become, you know? Yep. I remember, cause I was a drummer, I would play in the concert band and he's like, Scott, listen, and like, you just, you can, you can do whatever you want. Do, do like, he, he threw it away. He was like, you know, whatever you want to do. You want to sing, you're like, you like, you got it. And yep. it was the first time anybody that had, had expressed anything like that to me, right? Yep. And I was like, okay like it's so power like teachers have that power and um <laughs> just something you don't forget yeah. so um i don't know that's really cool and, yeah. and, and there's you no know, I, I i i imagine being a music teacher is frustrating and rewarding. oh definitely i mean i i'm going to do um instrumental music teaching so i take kids out of class you know teaching their thing and they go back so i love it i've been doing it for you know, over 20 years full time so yes it's great oh it's awesome yeah. Now, just quickly, I know you've got the next one coming. I uh, just want to quickly talk about you and your brother, because I, I grew up in the band with my brother. He's a drummer as well. Um, so how was that growing up with your brother on bass? And I, I know you just said you played drums. So did you guys used to jam with the drums and bass? So back when we were about uh, 13 or 14, I, I ran into James. I knew he played guitar. I had a drum kit um, that I was allowed to play at school, and then I, I cobbled together a kid. We would just jam every weekend, and Sean was, uh, he was into the same kind of stuff that we were into. You know, James loved Guns N' Roses, but Sean loved The Who, and Zeppelin, and Rush. And so we would just kind of fumble through these songs, you know, mm-hmm. the first, whatever, 30 seconds, or, you know, just try until it fell apart, and that was, that was, that was the fun of it. But yeah. he just, bass, you know, he was like, you know, he, he heard James playing, and um, I just one weekend, he, he, I don't think it was, it, it wasn't as like a, I don't know if he said like, mind if I join in, but he just t- took up the bass and mm. working ever since, you know? Mm. Uh, so it's been great. Like he's such an anchor, you know, Finger Eleven wouldn't exist, you know, cause there's so much, like, you know, there's extraneous stuff, you know, stuff that nobody wants to deal with, you know, or, uh, again, the cliche, the bass player you know, really drives or like, you know, takes mm. care of logistics and it's no, um, it's no different than, than in Finger Eleven. So um, and not only that, he's a fantastic bass player who takes his job very seriously. You know, yeah. if, he, if anybody screws up a live show, you know, we're, we always just say, oh, well, you know, we'll get him next time. You know, you just, but he has a hard time getting over a mistake and that just makes him better and better and better. You know, yeah. he's. That's really cool. That's great. I'll, I'll let you get to the next one. It's a bit like speed dating, isn't it? <laughs> 15 minutes is up. <laughs> next, please. We just got to go. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, hopefully see you guys down in Australia. Um, then we can meet up in person and have a talk. <laughs> well, hopefully, man. Hopefully we see you down there. Yeah, for sure. Right. And yeah, good luck with the album. Thank you very much. No see problem. You later. Let's see you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.